thanks to the organizers for inviting me to this nice workshop. It's always a great pleasure to visit Singapore. So um, this is, subject of this talk is uh, a little bit different from other talks in the sense that it's uh, uh, the application is in uh, cell biology, but nevertheless the uh, the topic is about interfaces and uh, surface surface energy. In my abstract, I was a little bit uh, ambitious about what I was going to talk about. It was a bit ra rather pure mathematics, so it's the emphasis of the talk is a little bit different today. So. <laughs> The aim is to introduce some interesting partial differential equation problems. And the, the important aspect is that they involve complex domains, which evolve, can evolve in time. So, with, so that means that there'll be interfaces and free boundaries. And I'm particularly interested in uh, things called biomembranes, which are... Uh, have interesting conforma conformations which can depend upon, uh, ca can and do depend upon uh, their interaction uh, with uh, proteins and their, uh, and their composition. And uh, the talk today will be uh, around phase separation. So the applications <coughs> are in understanding um, uh, math mathematical models for geometric biomembranes, and in particular, multi-component biomembranes exhibiting lipid phase separation. These, I'm also interested in the interaction of proteins with biomembranes. And some of the, the methodology, so I, 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 this is, my, my intention is to derive mathematical methodologies for tackling uh, such problems, which also arise in many other areas. The mathematical methodologies, I, I, I mean by, by that, developing uh, good mathematical formulations which have the, the possibility of being well posed and then developing numerical algorithms for these formulations. And <coughs> the methodologies that I'm talking about today are, can also be applied to uh, cell motility and chemotaxis. And the mathematical uh, objects are Really, the important point is surface energy. And because we have surface energy, we are immediately led to geometric partial differential equations. So it's important to, for me to think that if we have an energetic surface, then if we, we're interested in finding this surface, the, so the surface is going to vary. So you vary the, if you vary, an en vary the, air, the simplest energy density is one. So that's like saying you're varying the, varying the area, and the first variation gives you the mean curvature. So if you have more complicated energy densities, then you're going to have more complicated geometric quantities appearing. And surface energy, as we know, is, a stabili is stabilizing, if, it's con if we think of it as being convex. It's stabilizing. This, and it, the upshot of that, it's really, gives rise to an elliptic equation, an elliptic operator. So you should think when you have uh, surface energy and you have things like curvature coming into, that what you're doing is solving an elliptic equation. If it's evolving in time, you'll be maybe solving a parabolic equation. And if you take that perspective, you, you think that what you should be doing is to try to find a mathematical equation, a well-posed PDE for the geometric equations. So, <coughs> I'm interested in, uh, though I won't we'll talk about it, uh, in surface deformation by point constraints and forces. So in, can the con in the context of uh, biomembranes, it's just the placement of proteins and maybe filaments. We're led to partial differential equations on evolving surfaces and domains, as well as PDEs for the surfaces. So we've seen the equations for mean curvature flow, surface diff diffusion. The surface diffusion equation here, I mean that the surface, one, th one thinks that the surface itself is somehow diffusing. This gives rise to fourth order geometric partial differential equation. 
But on these surfaces which are evolving, there may be other processes. And these other processes may actually have their own partial differential equations. So we're interested in partial differential equations on evolving surfaces. Oh, but we might as well then think of partial differential equations on evolving domains. And can we have a mathematical theory for PDEs on evolving domains, which lead naturally to good uh, numerical methods? And the answer is yes, we can, though I won't talk about that today. Okay, so principally I'm going to talk about surface phase separation. But uh, I'm, I've also been interested in things which couple PDEs in the bulk to PDEs on the surface and the evolution of the surface. And if we think that the, a surface is uh, a free boundary, an unknown free boundary, then if we have a process on the surface, which is going to be modeled by a PDE, which might be a nonlinear PDE, then we're led to the concept of having a free boundary on a free boundary. And that's really what we'll be looking at today. So this is a cartoon. So this is the kind of thing that you'd see uh, in talks by some cell biologists. And we have a lipid bilayer. So this is uh, philic and this is phobic. And then we form th these bilayers are formed in uh, aqueous solutions. And there are also many different things which can happen uh, on on, the, on these bilayers, and this is just a cartoon which says that we could think in terms of uh, interactions with, pro, with, with proteins and other things, and filaments of the cytoskeleton, etc. And these interactions with uh, proteins, so in this instance we've got a, a pro, something, with, this is a cartoon, remember this is just a cartoon, this is saying that we have a protein which is going to affect the shape of the, mem uh, of the membrane by penetrating from the inside to the outside. What I'm going to say something about this picture up here. <laughs> so my talk is going to be about this picture up here. And this, is, uh, th this, is, uh, th this object was created in the laboratory. So it's what we call a, uh, uh, a giant unilamella vesicle. So it's larger than, uh, than cells. And we can see that it's, uh, it's got these things. It's got these red domains. In this instance, it's got blue domains. But you can see that there is something which looks like uh, phase separation. If you were working in material science, you might think that there are domains on the surface. So you have to find this surface in one sense. These are, all, these are other uh, sh shapes that, uh, that, that, what, that, that was observed here. One wants a mathematical model, and it's clear that if we have objects like this, then we're going to have to have surface energy. And you might also think that because these are almost circular domains here, we're going to have line energy on the, on the surface. And that's essentially the mathematical model. The surface energy plus a line energy. One might, there was a lot of interest in these types of domains because they thought they might be associated with things called lipid rafts. And lipid rafts have various, uh, 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 possibly considered to be associated with the functions of cells, but we're not going to talk about that. So I'm just going to say this is an example of raft formation, that that's really out of date, I think. So, so this is the object, or this is the object. Either you have a dominant blue phase or a dominant red phase. And I'm going to suppose that uh, gamma of t will be uh, my moving curved hypersurface, which is approximating this, the overall shape. And I'm going to have uh, an interface problem on on gamma, let's ignore that. And I'm going to suppose that we're interested in this elastic energy. So this is the Canham uh, Evans Helfrich energy. And we see that we, what we have here is uh, a coefficient 
and H is the mean curvature, and so this is something called a spontaneous curvature, and here we have the Gaussian curvature. I'm not going to talk at all about Gaussian curvature today. Uh, if this K of G is a constant, then we can ignore the Gaussian curvature by Gauss Bonnet, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to be interested in this uh, overall energy. Notice that uh, H is a second order differential operator on the surface. So this is uh, a, a natural, if you relate it to uh, PDEs and flat domains, it's like the, you might think it's like the integral of the Laplacian of a height squared. And that's actually uh, an approximation to this energy in what's called the Monge, ga in what's called the Monge gauge. And I'll come back to that later. <clears throat> but we're here in this picture here, we see that we have these red domains and blue domains. So there is a, uh, a, mo a model where we associate with the, this line, a line energy. So sigma here is, is like surface tension. It's in, it's, uh, but, it, it's, but it's for this line. And so we have, uh, in this model, a model for this would be that we would divide the uh, surface up into two regions, gamma 1 and gamma 2. And we would uh, have uh, the, this bending energy in each of the gamma i. And then on the lines, we would have the, uh, the line energy. So it's natural, as a model for this, to uh, have... Uh, you could go for this uh, sharp interface of, uh, formulation, if you wish. But it's also natural to, to think of a phase field model on the, uh, on the surface. So we could take this Carnhilliard functional here, where W is some suitable double well. Here it's just written as an example of a quartic. And we know even on uh, a curved surface, we would have uh, gamma convergence for a given curved surface and let epsilon go to zero. Then we will get gamma convergence and show, this will be, can be shown to be related to uh, the line energy associated with the limit. So now we're here, we could be interested in this uh, total energy. So we need to find gamma and phi. So I've actually, in this energy here, I've made all the, co the coefficients depend upon the phase. So we could have different uh, constants here and here. And here is my line energy. So this uh, energy functional was studied in these papers uh, with Bjorn Stinner. In this one, we considered that the formal asymptotics as epsilon goes to zero for this functional, and in this one we, uh, we did numerical simulations. So in the formal asymptotics, so we look, in this instance we're, we're looking at minimizers, then what we find is that uh, the surface gamma is divided into two, and we have on the line here, which separates gamma 1 to gamma 2, <coughs> then we have uh, interface, we have this, this equation here, for those people who, uh, this, actually this is a, a, one of the simplified uh, set, settings where contents are independent of uh, phi. This is the uh, elliptic equation which is associated with the Wilmore energy. So we have the Laplace, this is the, the Laplace Beltrami operator acting on the mean curvature. And this is the uh, uh, the surface divergence of the, no the no this is the surface gradient of the normal. So it's a little bit different from the uh, from uh, surface diffusion in that we have these extra terms. And lambda omega and lambda gamma i are simply Lagrange multipliers associated with very, with uh, area and uh, with, with volume constraints and area constraints. And then we have these uh, jump conditions. So it's possible to do this. So this is for, that, that was done by uh, formal asymptotics by 
parametrizing uh, epsilon surfaces over a limiting surface. On the other hand, we can uh, say, how do we get to a station? How do we get to a stationary solution? And we can get to a stationary solution by using gradient flow. And we've got two variables. We've got gamma and phi. So what does gradient flow look like? It says that we would have, uh, uh, the way that I've written it here, in some sense, we would have a normal velocity for the surface and some kind of uh, material velocity for the order parameter, phi, and it would be given by the first variation of the energy functional. And here, these are Lagrange multipliers associated with, certain, with, with constraints. So the resulting equations for uh, the full energy, where the, where the uh, bending constants and rigidity constants depend upon the phase, is given in, these, in, in this. This is the equation for the normal velocity. And this is the Allen Kahn equation. So we recognize the Allen Kahn terms here. We recognize this as something which comes from uh, a Lagrange multiplier associated with uh, area constraints on the, the phases of the, uh, uh, of the surface. And all of these terms here are just due to the fact that uh, these coefficients depend upon phi, and then, and then when we've, and in this term here, in this here, we see that uh, we have these expressions here, and this is because when we vary gamma, that's a, a way of, that, that little h is a way of, uh, writing down an area constraint for, for phi. So these are the, so these are the equations. And it's perfectly, not, perfectly possible to uh, solve these equations numerically, which is, what we which is what we did. And the methodology for solving these equations is uh, based on uh, evolving surface finite elements. In effect, you take a, a original a surface, and you or as time evol you triangulate it, and as time evolves, you follow the vertices of the triangle. You follow, follow the vertices of the triangulation. So, in effect, what you're computing is a parameterization of the surface over the over the original domain. Uh, what did I say in this? In this one, no, it's not. A, it's a constant. It's a constant. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah. So the idea is is that this is an this is the original surface. It's colored blue and red. This the scaling is to do with the with the, the values of the order parameter, which might be one and minus one in this instance. So you can see a darker region where there's an interface. And then we follow. We have to. We 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 we're able to uh, discretize uh, uh, use a variational formulation for the uh, for those two equations which I wrote down, and that gives naturally leads naturally to a finite element approximation, and uh, the upshot is oh oh that's the that's the upshot <laughs> anyway. So in this instance, we have uh, a finite element approximation of the surface, so the f and we want to follow the, ver follow, follow the motion of the uh, follow the motion of the triangular ver triangle vertices. Meanwhile, we're solving this rather uh, nonlinear Allen Kahn equation on the, on the surface by something which we call the evolving surface finite element method, which I'm not going to, to, dis I'm not going to discuss. But nevertheless, you have to say something about your numerical method. And this is what I call analysis-based computation, ABC. I think it's important to uh, to, to follow your ideas for numerical discretization through. So, 
in the development of numerical method, each method depends upon the formula, on the formulation. So we can have level set formulation, we can have phase field, we can have unfitted. There's all sorts of things that we one can do. And this is evolving surface finite element in it, in method. It's, it's, uh, we, we're actually directly discretizing the domain, which is one of the unknowns of the, uh, of the problem. It's important to carry out the analysis of discretization. I'm not going to do that. I'm just saying underlying it, underlying this talk, there is a lot of mathematical analysis, which I'm ignoring. So, as an example of a computation, so this is the target shape and we're solving the allen carney equation on this, uh, on this surface, which is, uh, if we think about this surface, it's, it's, it's a very highly nonlinear uh, Wilmore flow. It's more, it's more general than Wilmore, than Wilmore flow. And we're following the evolution of lines by a phase field method. And the lines are kind of solving a geodesic flow on this, on this evolving surface. Okay. So at present, there isn't a, uh, a mathematical analysis of these, equ of these equations. And in the axisymmetric case, you can do, uh, you can, uh, you can s formulate these problems using ordinary differential equations, which you then have to solve numerically. And we've, uh, we've looked at uh, convergence Convergence in epsilon. I'm not going to go talk in detail about this. I'm just showing this to say that we've look, we've done convergence in epsilon. So that's important in phase field approximations. I view phase field as, as an approximation to epsilon equals zero. So we've uh, shown in this particular instance convergence as epsilon goes to zero. And we've done all sorts of different shapes. <coughs> and our idea was that we wanted to uh, uh, look at this generate this, to simulate this uh, uh, rafts on a sphere, and this is what we, <laughs> so we set up an initial surface like this, triangulated it, and uh, it's relaxed to this shape. Okay, so this is what we did some years ago. And there's a, another way of looking at it, and this is the final triangulated surface and this is uh, another color plot. So this is what I would call a fully nonlinear two-phase geometric biomembrane model. <coughs> and the modeling is associated, we, we have a, uh, a parametric surface and a surface phase field. And the analysis, we've derived the equilibrium conditions and, and derived the relaxation for gradient flow. And it's really, in this methodology, you had to, in some sense, uh, uh, derive a surface calculus to enable, to, uh, enable us to uh, develop the, uh, the equations. And we did numerics by using quadratic finite elements on triangulated surfaces and using what we call evolving surface finite element method. And there's been quite a lot of um, numerical analysis uh, of surface finite elements in And I just want to talk about some issues about, uh, about s using triangulated surfaces. So here is uh, motion by mean curvature. It's a well-studied problem. There's nothing special about the example. It's, 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 a, it's a, a typical example that people like to show off their numerical methods. And in this instance, we have uh, a triangulated surface. And the, met and the, the uh, method for formulating the problem is due to Gerd Zuck. And essentially, uh, 
It's a discretization in some sense of an equation like this, where X is the X is parameterization of the surface. This is its deriv derivative, so that's the velocity. This is the Laplace Beltrami of the surface acting on the identity operator. This tells us, if we use this, we will calculate, then we have a parameterization in which the, uh, the normal, which the X of T, X dot is the normal velocity. That is the, if we were to approximate it by triangle, triangles, then the vertices of the triangles will approximate motion in the normal direction. This is not what happened in that simulation. <coughs> if you f allow triangles to, okay. If you allow triangles to move in the vertical, uh, just in the normal direction, then you don't have any control of the shapes of triangles. And this is particularly bad, not just for approximating the surface, but also for uh, solving PDEs on the surface. You like your triangles to uh, be, have nice shapes. In particular, you wish to avoid having a very large angle. So you want to avoid angles which are close to pi. The simulation here was uh, uh, carried out by a method which uh, uh, modifies this equation by having tangential motion, and it's done in a in, it's done in a rigorous uh, way. So there's a PDE, there's an underlying partial differential equation for the parameterization, and associated with that is is uh, a uh, computation involving uh, uh, approximating the uh, harmonic map heat flow. So harmonic maps have the property of maintaining angles. So we, in this simulation, in the simulation here, although you may not be able to see it, the triangles are, really have a very nice shape all the way through to, uh, to, the, sing to the singularity. Now that kind of thing is important when you wish to solve, uh, well, if you want to accurate, accurately solve uh, these equations, but it's also important if you want to solve PDEs on the surface, which is what I want to do. Okay. And it can also be done in a, in a it can also be done on a flat domain. An interesting thing about on this flat domain is the underlying, the under, the underlying parametric, uh, base surface is an open-ended cylinder associated with the two circles. So the, in some sense, there's a surface finite element method underlying this. And in this simulation, Though I won't show, only show a little bit. This is a bad. This there's no there is no partial differential equation in principle. What we're doing is showing a parameterization of the domain, which is time dependent. So you're following the vert, you're following the vertices, and the parameterization is carried out by using something which is standard in uh, fluid finite element computations. Is that you use the velocity, given velocity of the boundaries, and then calculate and solve. Uh, Laplace's equation for the velocity of the interior. And if you do that, then what you see, you get these absolutely awful triangles here. In fact, it's not even clear that you have a proper tri a, a triangulation. What do you well, mean by an open-ended cylinder? Open -ended triangulate the open, you, you the domain is parameterized over the open-ended okay. cylinder. So you, you can, you can this obviously is a natural parameterization of this domain. Yes, yeah, 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 yes, sure. It's the same domain and using the same idea of using this new, new, new method, then we find that the triangles preserve their shape in effect. Though some become smaller and some become larger. But it's okay if our triangles become small and become large because it's easily dealt with by refinement and coarsening. And refinement and coarsening can be carried out without changing the shape of the, without changing the mesh quality. Whereas if you produce a, a, a very large angle, it's, it's, it's really quite difficult to do this in, any, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a rational way. And we use this idea for solving the so-called Healy Shaw suction problem. Here, this is solving a, a, a Poisson equation where there is a, sort, a sink at a point, so it's sucking fluid out of that domain. And what you see is this problem is, is not well put. It blows up in finite time. It blows up in finite time by the, by the formation of a cusp at the, uh, where you can see where the cusp is going to 
is going to appear. And if one will follow through these, uh, follow through those triangles, you see the gain in the, the, the shape is good almost up until the time of singularity. So underlying, underlying uh, the kind of uh, simulations that we like to carry out is, uh, uh, is, uh, is a technology associated with uh, discretizing PDEs on the triangulated surfaces. And then the necessary analysis. So now I want to come back to uh, the lipid rash form it, formation, formation. And you saw it in Amy's talk yesterday, you saw this equation. Yt equals minus Y4x, which is a, uh, <coughs> an approximation to Uh, well, depending on how you want to write this. Okay, you can write this in. <laughs> yeah, you could, you could write it like this. It's an approximation to surface diffusion, nonlinear. And so, when it's approximation which is based upon the, what we call the Monge gauge, and basically what you're saying is this, that the surface is can be thought of as a, uh, a graph over a flat surface. And so it's in the physics literature for looking at these biomembranes, people, lo people look at uh, equations which close up. And so you can, if, if you've got something which is spherical, then if you look close up, then you can think that um, it could be considered to be flat. And so a typical equation that people look at is this one. So it's a capital plus squared H. This is comes from the bending. This is the uh, surface tension. Um, and then you can put in some, you can put in uh, uh, delta function forces. And lots of, you do also, and, or you can solve the problem in domains like this, where you can think of these as being approximate modeling the insertion of proteins or particles, or actually a whole collection of proteins or particles and set a boundary, va set a boundary value problems for, for this type of equation. And this was we uh, with uh, Carsten Grazer, Graham Hobbs, Ralph Kornhumer and Myron Wander Wolf, we consider boundary value problems associated with this equation uh, in this setting in, in, a, in a recent paper. And it's just seemed to me to be interesting to ask the question of, uh, this is the Monge gauge, and it's, uh, we've taken small perturbations of uh, a flat surface, in effect, and this is what we get. So maybe I thought maybe we, one could look at uh, the Monge gauge in a different way o over curves, curved surfaces. So let's go back to the, origi back to the original model. <laughs> Actually, it turns out that the, uh, there's a well-known paper, there's a <laughs> famous paper, I shouldn't say well-known, famous paper by Lieblin from 86, in which uh, he, has a, a phase, he has a phase field model uh, associated with uh, a, a given surface, so this is the, the this is the reference here, and uh, he introduced a coupling between. So he had this energy, integral kappa over two h squared, and this, another energy f two, which is the uh, got the Karl Hilliard type energy. Then introduced introduced a third term, which is a coupling between phi and h, and if you were to complete the square, it means that you, you get the energy that I wrote down earlier. Okay. So, 
So it's, when I say I, I wanted to look at the, uh, the Monge gauge, I, uh, I mean that I, want, I know that if I minimize the uh, energy, the, I can minimize the, uh, the, uh, the surface energy, and if I apply constraints of volume, then I find that what I get is a sphere. And the sphere is well known to be what a minimized or a critical point of the, of the Wilmore energy. And also we have something called the Clifford Torus. It's also a well known minimizer of the, uh, of the uh, Wilmore energy. And if it's a minimizer, a critical point, it means its first variation is zero. So you can exploit that. So I should, I'll indicate how we exploit that in a moment. So I'm going to say that gamma zero is a, a base surface and gamma rho is a perturbation. And I'm going to perturb in the normal direction from the base surface with the parameter rho and the height function h. And what I would like to do is to derive a partial differential equation for h when there's a perturbation to the energy. And the perturbation here is uh, given by this uh, energy functional, kahn hilliard energy functional, uh, with this term in here, which is essentially due to the coupling between, uh, cur between curvature and uh, composition. So we do have, a, have, an, we have an expansion and it turns out that we can write this down in terms of, because the first, because the first variation of the zero order term vanishes on, ga on gamma zero, we're led to a second order term. And so the second order term is this. The calculation is this one here. And if we look at this calculation, we got, you see we have a terms, this term depends upon phi, this is term depends on phi, and this one here is simply the second variation of the energy, of the original energy from the base domain. And the second variation, because, it's a minim, because the sphere is a minimizer, is positive definite. And this is the, this is the advantage of using, using this approach. So although if you look at this, you see that there's kappa and there's kappa. So we have a kappa here and a kappa there. And so we see this is a non, this looks like a, a neg, that's a negative definite term. And we have a sigma here and then we have another sigma here, which is also a not, which is also a non-definite, a negative definite term. But we're interested in uh, uh, doing this minimization over, with constraints. So it turns out that this is, uh, this is positive definite. And then we have this uh, extra term coming from the, uh, from the, uh, from the kahn hilliard functional. So now we have a new model, which is to consider minimizers and uh, a gradient flow for this energy functional over a sphere. And one can also do the same thing over a Clifford torus. And in principle, one could do this calculation over any critical point of uh, surface en uh, uh, for surface energies. And so it gives rise, so it gives a way of uh, solving uh, nonlinear equations on a fixed surface, even though the upshot will be a, a, new, sur up sur a, a new surface. So the, uh, this is calculation is uh, in this paper here which is referenced in the abstract. So this, in this context, this is joint work with a PhD student, Luke Hatcher. And it's, uh, we can, uh, well, it's kind of clear that there's going to be a minimizer under the, uh, over this set here. So this is, uh, new i is the normal to, uh, to the sphere the three components of the normal. So we need these constraints. This is basically saying that the, uh, the volume is given, which we don't change the volume of the sphere. And under these conditions, then the, uh, or that should be the mean value of phi is given. Under these conditions, there is a minimizer. 
we can calculate the uh, gradient flow. And the gradient flow gives rise to uh, this uh, uh, Alan Kahn equation, though we've also looked at Kahn Hilliard equation as well. And this is the equation for the deformation of the membrane. So we notice that we've got the height, time derivative of the height. There's our Laplace squared gamma there, which is just like the yt equals minus 4xy. Well, we can do the usual well-posedness of, uh, of, this, uh, of this system. And we can show that it exists. it's well-posed and the energy decreases, etc. And <coughs> if we want to solve this, solve this numerically, it's nice to use uh, uh, H1-conforming finite elements rather than try to find finite elements which are conforming for, in H2 because it's much more complicated. In fact, uh, finite elements conforming in H2 for, on curved surfaces that's a, a kind of a, an open question. So it's natural then to do second order splitting. So here is the splitting. So we introduce this variable, which is uh, minus the plus gamma h plus h. And so now we have an equation, second order equation for w, second order equation for h, and a second order equation for phi. If one discretizes this, in natural ways, you end up with a system like, systems like this. And um, actually, you, this, what, there's, there's an interesting mathematical structure associated with this in the sense that it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a non-standard, it's a non-standard uh, saddle point problem. So often people uh, in finite element analysis like to use uh, saddle point problems for looking at, uh, sometimes they occur naturally for fluid problems, but sometimes you set up uh, saddle point problems when you're solving high order equations and you want to use uh, uh, second order splitting. But that's a different story. And this is the upshot. So this is a, a simulation. This is, uh, you start off with some uh, very small noise around uh, the mean value of zero and we get this solution which is kind of looks typical for uh, doing uh, phase field simulations but if we increase the, uh, the mean value to minus 0.25 then we get these uh, spots and if we increase it too much then we get n virtually nothing. I'm coming to the end of my talk. So missing from this talk, uh, unfortunately, it's a lot of mathematical analysis and numerical analysis, the discussion of finite size particles, which you can find in this paper here, and the discussion of point particles, which is, there's a general theory for flat and curved domains in these two papers. And then there's the uh, particle interactions, because actually what we kind of, what, what is kind of interested, interesting is, is that when you put these particles, then they experience a force. We have ignored. If they experience a f just from their position, they experience a force, which might be repulsive, it might be attractive, and they should move. So, so where, where are they going to move to is an interesting question. Where, that's, that in a sense, where would you expect points or particles to end up if you were to do an energy minimization? And then if you put a large number of particles in, is it, could you then think of having a, uh, uh, a composition? Yeah, well, I guess, I guess you can, because that's where we, ha we had a, comp in, our, in our phase field model, we had a, we ha had a compositional var variable. So particle interactions, and, but not, they not just interact through the, uh, the, uh, the curvature of the membrane, but they could also have uh, repul their own repulsive or attractive forces. Okay, so you could imagine uh, introducing uh, uh, equations for the motion of the particles where the force is coming from the membrane, curvature force from the membrane, but also from their own, their own, own interactions. And then you could also put fluctuations in. So this is where so this is where we're going in uh, this direction. 
And uh, with that, I thank you for your attention. I use, that's a good question. So you use second order splitting. So in the same way that, so. So, uh, I mean, from the point of view of the final element approximation, you're talking, I think. I, I don't know, maybe, maybe if you just similar to saying, how do you do the Laplacian squared u equals f? And you can introduce W equals to minus Laplacian U. And then Laplacian of W is equal to F. Well, and so you can use your conforming meth H1 met for this and conforming for this. And this is the way that we, this is the way that we do uh, the, uh, the Wilmore flow, and also it was a, the way you do surface diffusion as well. You use second, you use second order splitting. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's. I believe that the yes. I, this is, but one can do this in these. One does this in the standard in, in the standard setting, right? That if you have multi-component, multi-component order parameters, right, and you write down an energy which. With all this complicated, complicated energy, but you, there's actually algorithms for relating relating the phase field approximation to uh, to, uh, uh, to to phase diagrams, and people have people have done that that kind of thing over the uh, over the years, and I guess one could do the same could do the same here, but that's. This is all. This is all just start. This, this is this, this. This kind of thing is just starting. I mean, this is not a. I'm not. Don't, I'm not talking to biologists about this. But very often about this. By the way, this is a, a mathematical adventure, <laughs> which I hope will will have some uh, connection. Well, there, I know that there are I, actually. I, 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 I'm, I, there are biophysicists who are interested in these types of uh, interested in these types of models. Yeah, I guess I'm pretty sure that you can get. The, look, there are some. Yes, this is the answer. Of course, you will be able to get that kind, get that kind of thing. In these simulations, which I just showed you, my, I really wanted to to choose initial configurations to produce equilibria, which I knew kind of knew existed from for for for, for, for different for differing reasons. So it was all so, so in those numerical simulations, which were done several years several years ago, several years ago, we did, it was a feasibility study for for uh, evolving surface finite elements and how to and whether we could actually compute equi sensible equilibria. Right, that's that was the motive. That was the motivation for doing it. It wasn't uh, a tool for. Uh, I wasn't going for the pathologies. Sure. Yeah, so that's another interesting question, the pathologies, which is to do with topology change, which, which is, I guess, this is, would be completely... De oh, well, I wanted to show something else. <laughs> no, I can't, do, I can't do it to you. <laughs> I just realized there was a numerical simulations that I was going to show you. 
which, uh, which, is about, which was about cell migration, which has, uh, but I can show, you to you after, show it to you afterwards. And in there we, we, we were simulate, simulating supposedly uh, the movement of cells in chemotactic gradients. And we're using different, and then there are there are computations with different energies. So if we don't have enough bend, if we don't have enough uh, surface tension, then the the thing can bend and intersect, it, it bend and intersect. Uh, actually, what's what's interesting about this is if the curves, this is not a problem for the uh, the the, math the mathematical model. You can have intersection because it's all because everything is just done locally. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> You could say it doesn't mean anything from the physical perspective, but uh, from the mathematical perspective, there is a meaning. Yeah. 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 So, in, in some of your uh, models, you use Helen Hunt. Yes. And uh, in other cases, you use Carnelian. Yeah, again, I, I don't have a reason for doing that. Uh, well, actually, I do have a reason to do it. <laughs> Yes. Yes. There's a Gorange multiplier. Is there any difference between these two models? In this equilibria, no. In the time to, in the time evolution, there will there will be. But actually, we haven't simulated. We didn't in this particular. At the end here, we I haven't simulated the Cohen Hilliard. Really, just simulated the simulated the Alan, Alan Kahn. Um yeah. Because the physicists, they don't think the uh, Alan Kahn with this kind of constraint is physically sound. I'm happy for physicists to say that. I don't understand. I, I, <laughs> I don't understand. I, I mean, what, what kind of physical interpretation could you, could you attach to the Alan Kahn equation with the Lagrange multiplier? Yeah. You can see the Lagrange multiplier you could think of as being some kind of... Uh, a jump of uh, pressure across the uh, across the interface, which uh, is forcing, which is forcing, and you're and you're and you're and you're and you're relaxing to this. So, you, so there could be a physical inter there could be a physical interpretation. But the point of doing the Allen Kahn dynamics was just a way of getting to the equi getting to the equilibrium. This is what I what in this simulations I showed at the end. What I wanted was to get those lipid was to get those rafts <laughs> from this model. That's what I wanted, and I was, yeah.